Hello, ladies and gentlemen. To the best of our current knowledge, SARS-CoV-2 is transmitted mainly through aerosols and droplets. We have long known that many of these aerosols, which are potentially infectious, can arise during dental treatment. My name is Dr. Martin Koch. I am the director of the Academy at Dürr Dental and a microbiologist. Today I would like to explain how these aerosols are generated and how we can avoid them. In dentistry, we use a wide range of instruments that are driven or cooled by water. Let's look at this in detail. Examples are the powder jet handpiece, the air and water syringe, the ultrasonic scaler, and also our turbines and straight and contra-angle handpieces. Well, these turbines and straight and contra-angle handpieces turn over at least 400,000 rpm. This makes the tooth surface extremely hot, which requires cooling water. Let's look at this with the following example. During dental treatment with a turbine, the water jet is accelerated very strongly. The water jet is reflected off the tooth surface and creates an extreme amount of particles, as we can see in this magnified slow motion recording. These particles leave the patient's mouth as a spray mist. Why is this spray mist potentially infectious? Well, this cloud consists of cooling water, particles such as tooth substance or powder, but also saliva and blood. Over 600 different types of bacteria have been identified in saliva, and over 100 million bacteria per milliliter of saliva are in these particles. The biggest problem is posed by the smaller particles, smaller than 10 microns, as these can breathe in and reach the alveoli. And precisely these are what our dental aerosols are. A so-called saliva ejector is always used in dental treatment. You can see for yourself what effect a saliva ejector has on an aerosol reduction. In this magnification you can see an example of what happens when you use a so-called spray mist suction with 300 liter per minute. With this spray mist suction, essentially no more aerosols can be detected. How can we explain these differences between a small saliva ejector and a large suction cannula? Well, we analyzed this more closely with a new method, the so-called shadow imaging. In this video, you see particles examined closely with shadow imaging and how these particles fly through a measurement field. If you now increase the flow rate of the suction, we have exactly this effect. At 100, 150 liter per minute, we have essentially no aerosol reduction. But there is a tipping point at a flow rate of 250 to 70 liter per minute, and you can no longer detect aerosols starting at a flow rate of about 300 liters per minute. It is extremely important that these aerosols are aspirated within a patient's mouth. A good suction technique is helpful in this context. As you see here in this video, the distance from cannula to tooth is important. The smaller the distance, the more aerosols can be aspirated. Ladies and gentlemen, I have shown you how these dental aerosols are generated. I have shown you the three measures you can use to avoid these aerosols as much as possible. These are firstly an intraoral spray mist suction with a flow rate of at least 300 liters per minute. A second measure is a large cannula with a design that can capture these aerosols as well as possible. And the third is a suction technique with a distance from cannula to tooth that is as small as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Dual Dental offers optimal solutions for all of these three measures.
Ask your dental dealer. Thank you.